Shalom, shalom. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to reset my camera a bit that I'm not looking upside down. But I greet you this morning. May you be blessed. May you be highly favored. May God make his face to shine upon you. May you experience his love, his fullness, his glory in your life. May God just uplift you, whatever mighty clay you find yourself, whatever prison you find yourself, whatever situation you find yourself. May God, by His power, just shake that prison and pick you up out of that mighty clay. May you experience the glory of God. Amen. So yes, good morning, good morning, good morning, South Africa. Salamat siyang to all my Indonesian friends. It is Monday, it is already the 5th of June, and yes, it is another week, this year is rushing by, but in all, we are thankful for every morning, when we await God's grace and His mercy on you every morning, hallelujah. I see already some people on, I cannot really see who is on, but good morning, good morning. Uh, if you're from Indonesia, Salamat Siang. And uh, our time is now in Indonesia, just one minute past two o'clock. And uh, in South Africa, it seems like the one minute past nine o'clock. I'm really excited about what the Spirit of God is being revealed to me. Because, you know, we find ourselves constant under oppression, constant in battle. But God wants to bring us into victory. The things that you're, that hold you back, the things that bind you, that war that you are in constantly, it's time to get into a place of victory. Amen. So let's pray and we start this morning. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you this morning for the word of God. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the power that you have given us. I thank you this morning, Lord, may the word of God just make us to look to the inside and ask ourselves, are we fearful going to battle? Are we faint-hearted looking at the size of our problems? What happens on the inside when we see the difficulty, when we see the enemy attack us, when we see the storm? What is in our heart? What do we see how do we uh, um, experience that or how do we perceive that? I just pray this morning, Lord, may the word settle people's hearts. May all fear just run, all faint hearted just being restored by the power that we have in Jesus Christ, by your blood. And I pray for everyone this morning, may you touch them. May you uplift them. May they experience a change today. In Jesus Christ, mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Sophia, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Good morning in Rustenburg. May God bless you. I will not ask how is your renovations coming. But yeah, it's war and uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. So this morning... I just want to have a sip. South Africa is really cold. Indonesia is really hot. Hallelujah. All right, let's get on to the word of God. Amen. So this morning, my message is this. The fearful and faint-hearted are disqualified from the battle. Now, how many people you know going into a battle fearful? How many people you knowing facing some difficult, what we call a battle or a storm and are faint hearted? But yet, actually, according to the word, they are disqualified from the battle. What does it mean? Meaning you cannot go into the battle because God knows what's in your heart. God knows what will be the outcome. If you go into a battle filled with fear or being faint hearted. And if you look today, the battles that we find in the body of Christ, 
the battles that people are facing and not winning. Mariki, Mariki, praise the year now from Bali. Was it your long glass for sales, Mariki? May God bless you. Beulah, good morning. My condolences also to you. You lost your mommy. May God strengthen you during this time. Um, I know it's not easy, but may God just strengthen you. Amen. So I, I want to tell you this morning that God is a God, you know, that said certain things. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1. Uh, it's, it, the, the heading there is laws concerning warfare. Now in the Old Testament, there were certain laws that was applicable when there was a war. And I want you to see, we will read there from verse 1. Now listen what it says. When you go out to war against your enemies, my question to you, what and who are your enemies today? What is the things that standing against you this morning? Lydia, good morning. Now it says, when you go out to war, meaning God has spoken to you, like he spoke to Joshua, be not afraid, you know, uh, uh, stand firm. So when you go out to war against your enemies, and then he says, and see horses and chariots and an army larger than your own. So when you go out to war, meaning you say, who will fight with me? Yes, yes, pick me, pick me. And then you go as part of an army to the war. And then Usually, you will come to a place where you will see the enemy. I want you to see this. The same thing today. God will allow you to bring you to a place to truly see the size of your problem. To truly see the size of your enemy. And it says here, when you go out to war against your enemies and see... Horses and chariots and an army larger than your own. You shall not be afraid of them. Hallelujah. Listen, in Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1, it says laws concerning warfare. So when you choose to stand up against your sickness and you go out and you hear what the doctors has said, you see the outcome of what the doctors have said is much larger than what you thought. You shall not be afraid of them. Maybe this morning your business is struggling financially. Maybe you find yourself, Sophia, in a situation when you go out and war and you see your problem has escalated to such a big issue that it's much larger than your own, what you think you have, you shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord, our God, is with you. Hallelujah. You know, I can, yeah, I can just speak on this scripture. What an amazing scripture. And that was a law concerning warfare. But I, 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 I want to go on. It says, For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you out, up out of the land of Egypt. Children of the Most High, you are brought out of this world. You are brought out of that. God has given you all the things needed to warfare. But the thing is here, when you are coming out to warfare and you see... You shall not be afraid. Why? Because God is with you. Let's go on. Verse 2. And when you draw near to the battle, when you are facing the situation, the priest shall come forward and speak to the people and shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are drawing near for battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint. Do not fear or panic or be in dread of them. And when I read that, I say, God, how we need to pray for one another. 
the person that's coming to war should seek a man and woman of God and say, pray for me so I can stand for him. Speak into my life and tell me that my heart will not faint, that I will not fear, I will not panic, I will not dread the enemy, but God is with me. So that's what happened. They will bring the priests to speak to the soldiers and say, don't look down in your own lacking. Amen. Let's go on. Verse 4. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies. To give you victory. So God said, listen, you already have the victory. I want you to pitch up. I want you to look at the enemy. I want you to know who I am, the one that brought you out of Egypt. I want you to hear the word of my priest. I want you to hear the, ins the Holy Spirit speaking to you, knowing that I will not leave nor forsake you, and knowing that I will be with you. For when you fight against enemies, you shall have the victory. I want to tell you this morning, whatever war you are in now, whatever battle you are facing right now, if you put this to heart and trust God and trust the word of God, you will have victory. It goes on. So I'm asking, what are you facing today? Who is your enemy? Sickness, poverty, finance, relationship, envy, jealousy, bitterness, gossip, unforgiveness. I want to go on to verse 5. Then the officers shall speak to the people, saying, Is there any man who has built a new house and has not dedicated it? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in battle and another man dedicate it. And then he goes on, And is there any man who has planted a vineyard and has not yet enjoyed its fruit? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man enjoy his fruit. And is there any man who had betrothed a wife and has not taken her? Let him go back to his house, lest he die in a battle and another man take her. Now we come to verse 8. Actually, the verse I want to read. And the officers shall speak further to the people and say, Is there any man who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go back to his house, lest he make the heart of his fellows melt like his own. You see, the faint-hearted and the one that fear are disqualified for the battle. I want you to see that. So fearful and faint-hearted makes you not to go. I mean, that you are disqualified to fight to the ones that say, you know, I trust God. And I want to show you that. So now we find Gideon. They've been oppressed Israel by the Midianites for seven years. God raised up Gideon. We know the story. And God is preparing him to fight this battle. And listen in context for the law. What happened in Judges chapter 7 verse 1. Then Jeribal, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Harrow. And the camp of Midian was north of them by the hill of Mori in the valley. They were now encamped on a mountain. So what verse 1 says, show the picture where are Gideon and this 32,000 men. They were encamped where they can see the Midianites at the Mount of Gilead. They could see the numbers. Now, there's a scripture that says approximately 135,000 Midianite soldiers were encamped there. So what happened? He brought the people that said, yes, I will follow Jesus. I will go all the way. I will go to war. It's easy to say I will go to war and fight a battle until you've seen the enemy. Until you've seen the size of the enemy. So God says it's when you see that the true test in your heart is being revealed that makes you to go on and fight the battle and see God give, you know, God fight the battle and victory to you. Or it will show faint-heartedness that disqualifies you to fight that battle. So they were on this mountain and this 32,000 see 
because the law said they must see. It's only when you see the size of the enemy that will show what's truly in your heart. How many people fainted, turned back because of that? So, verse 2, the Lord said to Gideon, the people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites in the hand. Lest Israel boast of me saying, my own hand has saved me. But God knew also what is in the hearts and the minds of the people, seeing the situation. Verse 3. Now therefore proclaiming the ears of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and trembling, Esmeralda, Huyamore, my God bless you, Lange Barn, uh, Richards Bay, uh, is Richards, yes, not Richards Bay, what is that, uh, Esmeralda, near Lange Barn. but let's go on. Now therefore proclaiming the ears of the people, saying, whoever is fearful and trembling, it can actually say, whoever do not trust God enough in this situation. Pastor Michel, goeiemorgen, goeiemorgen. Whoever do not trust God amidst in the battle, the storm that they are facing right now, the one that is fearful, the one that is trembling, it says, let him return home and hurry away from Mount Gilead. And guess what? 32,000 people, 22,000 were fearful. The majority, they were trembling when they see. Now, we read in, in Deuteronomy chapter 20 that the fearful must go. They cannot, they are disqualified to fight in the battle because their negativeness, their fear can influence the others. We see that also in the 12 spies, although they didn't go out in war, they only went to see the promised land. And when they came back, they saw the size. What did they see? The size of the enemy made them to fear. And they were disqualified to enter into a battle at that time with Jericho and conquered God's promises for them. No, because of that fear, they had to go back. They stayed for 40 years in the desert because, and that whole generation missed the victory because their fear disqualified them to receive the victory that God wants to give them because they've lost where they come from. They've lost how God brought them out of Egypt. They've lost it, the sight and the power of who God is more and more from, from what God did even through the plagues. So he said, so God said, speak in their ears. Let's see how many of them are really truly ready for battle. And the reality is today in the church, many people say, Pastor, use me until they see the battle, until they see the conditions or the situations, or until the storms start to, to touch them. What happened then? Good morning, good morning. Um, what happened? They become, the word says, they become fearful and trembling. And 22,000 re returned and 10,000 remained. And the Lord said to Gideon, now we jump to verse 7. After they've selected 10,000 also and only 300 were left. With the 300 men who were left, uh, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand and let all the others go, every man to his home. So Gideon had this army of 32,000, small in comparison of the 135 or the 175,000 that 135,000, not 170, 135,000 of the, of the Midianites. You can imagine you're only 30,000 and you see you are outnumbered about nearly five to one. You've not been trained. You've been farmers. You have no weapons or rarely any weapons because the Midianites took all of them. They had no blacksmiths. So the only thing they had was the thing they used to be as farmers. And they faced this army that oppressed them for seven years. I mean, many of them, their spirit may be broken, already give up. But God said, I cannot go to war with the fearful. Because the fearful says God is not enough. 
the, the one that the heart is trembling amidst the storm and the thing you're facing right now, it says that God cannot honor his word and give me the victory because that's what your heart is saying. So Gideon was ready to think that, you know, that God, this is the army, but God says, no, no, this is too much. This is too much. But God so fit not to make use of all of them. I mean, the fact that we say, yes, I'm in Jesus Christ's army, doesn't make it necessary. God will bring you into battle and give you the victory. Because first, when you see your problem and your reaction towards your problem shows if you are feared, faint hearted or are trembling. If you are trembling, you are disqualifying yourself going to battle because your words can influence your fellow brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ that hold on to their faith because your negative word being spoken about the enemy can have an effect. And God said, let me just deal with it. Just go home. You stay under oppression. You stay in the desert until the time is fit that your faith has rise, that you can stand up against the enemy. That's why many people li live defeated lives. That's why many people, when they come to the battle, when they see the, the size, their hearts are trembling. Amen. It's actually strange. It's the only time where God purposefully made the army less. The only time. But we see also what the law that God has given says that a fearful cannot fight. Why did Gideon didn't ask them? Because the situation at that time, they were under oppression. He sent an angel. I mean, they, they were, they were just judges. They were not kings or anything yet, but yet, they thought maybe it was not necessary. But the reality is when you face your enemy, you know, your reaction, what's in your heart, will either qualify you to go with God into that battle and you will see victory because that's the promise. Because God says you will not fear. But if you fear and you tremble, God says rather go back. You're not ready to fight. You cannot yet have victory because in your heart and mind you must believe who God is then your victory will come. And that's why many people struggling. I mean, God would hereby show that when he employed suitable instruments in his service, he did not need them. He didn't need 32,000. He didn't need the fearful. He didn't even need people that when he reduced the 10,000 to 300 that had a different way on what he won. I say, but could do his work without them so that he was not indebted to man but yet God used man so that he can be glorified. I said the second point. He would hereby put those to shame for the cowardice who had timely submitted to the Midianites and does not make head against them because of the dispropor pro disproportion of their numbers. Amen. And actually God says, you know, one can chase a thousand, but they've lost maybe their faith. I know who God is. Maybe you are finding yourself this morning in a battle. What is the thing that disqualifies you to receive the victory or prolong the victory? Is your heart trembling? Because if trembling, you lost actually your faith in God. Because God, Deuteronomy 8, uh, Deuteronomy 20 says it's so good. You need to trust God. Looking at what he had done in your life. The fourth, the third point. He would hereby silence and including, excluding both people that boasting. This is the reason here given by him who knows the pride that is in men's heart. Let Israel, you know, uh, hello my darling wife. So what happens? Usually the people that are fine hearted are easy the ones that say it's because of me that we have the victory. The people that never enter into the battle, but always running away, are easily the one, when a battle is won, they're the ones that say, you know, it was us, it was us, but I've never entered. So God said, I will not share my glory with the one boasting and said, yes, Lord, I've enlisted, but I've never fight. My heart was never put on you in trust for the victory. 
God wants to be glorified. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 8. And the officers shall speak further to the people and say, Is there any man who is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go back to his house, lest he make the heart of his fellows melt like his own. Cowards would be as likely as any after the victory to take the honor of it from God. They've not prepared. God said, I will not allow that. I will not share. And we find it so many people shout loud, but they, they never into the warfare because of their fear. But yet, when the victory comes, they take the honor. Amen. So we need to understand. I say something that oppression, the oppression they had been under so long had broken their spirits. Maybe that's why they were fearful. But I say fear. Fearful, faint-hearted people are not fit to be employed for God. And among those who are enlisted under the banner of Christ, there are more such than we think here today. Even in the church today. We can just see when the storm of life happens. Because we are at war. We are in battle. The forces of darkness never sleep. They never stop. But you know, we do not discern the enemy. We just, because it's easy to just let it go. Just live a defeated life. But God has called us to a higher dimension. He has given us what, what is needed. But it starts with faith in your heart. Trust in God. It starts with this thing. That I will not mm -hmm. fear. It's so amazing when God speaks to Joshua. And said do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Just know that I will be with you. Three, four times he spoke to Joshua. And that was just before they cross through the Jordan and into battle. So God is saying this morning to you, do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Just know I am with you. Meditate on my word. Seeing the promises are yes and amen. And I will give you victory because I will go in front. Because the victory is my glory. Amen. I want to conclude this morning. Just want to see. I want to conclude this morning. There's one thing I want to say. It was so amazing that these 300 men, and I want to say it, this 300 men, God didn't say take any weapons, take anything. It actually just said the only soldier need to take food, what he can carry for the battle. They had to leave their baggage. Every man burdened himself with his own provision. Then I thought about Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus sent out his disciples, don't take anything. Don't rely on what the earthly things you think you will need. Don't even take an extra pair of shoes or a tunic. Don't even take your money. Just go into battle. I have given you authority to open the blind, to heal the sick. To chase out demons. I've given it to you. Go to battle with me. Without fear and doubt. And this 300. God is actually telling them. Whatever you can carry in the, as food. You must bring everyone choose for himself. So actually. Say they were only burdened by their provision. And that was the trial of their faith. Whether they could trust God and whether they had no more provisions. So either they will die of hunger or they will die by the sword. But they had to trust God. An amazing thing. The second thing. Does, um, every soldier turns to be a trumpeteer. I mean, not any uh, 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 swords or anything. But only a trumpet. I say they were furnished with these instead of weapons of war, as if they had been going rather to a gang than to a battle. The presence of the finer hearted in an army was a source of weakness and not strength. And we saw 22,000, that was the source of weakness, had to leave. And we find that in many churches today. Many people can easily amongst people declare victory in the name of Jesus. But once they see going home and they are facing the enemy and they're entering into a battle, 
the true thing in their heart is being revealed. That faint heartedness. And then the law in the Old Testament said, you know what? You cannot go to war. You go back to your house. You, you will not strengthen the people surrounding you. And I, and I want to call upon this morning. The one thing that we need to learn. One thing we need to understand. It's all about faith in God. It's what you believe. And I want to go back to the first scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 1. What an amazing scripture. When you go out to war against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and an army much larger than your own, you see your problems is so huge, you shall not be afraid of them. God is speaking to someone this morning and said, you have seen the enemy. You have a choice. If you fear and tremble, you are disqualified to enter into this battle. He says, when you see the problem much larger than what you can handle, you shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And when the priests come and speak to the people, today you are drawing near to the battle against your enemies. Let your heart, let not your heart faint. Do not fear or panic or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God is he who gives you to the fight, to fight for, for you against your enemies, to give you the victory. This is my message this morning. Do you need the victory? Rebuke the fear, the unbelief, the faith. Whatever you are facing this morning, God says when you go to war and you see the enemy, you see the situation is so big, do not fear. You shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord, your God is with you. And that settles it. It's not how it's going to happen. And God had to reduce 32,000 people looking down on a huge army. And they in their hearts just said, 22,000, we cannot. I will die here. I cannot. So God said, the ones that speak negative, let me get rid of them. Because they can influence other people. What is coming out of your mouth? When you face a situation, are you doubting God? Are you in fear? Are you faint-hearted? Because it will show. But the reality is you will disqualify yourself going to war and see the victory. You will be prolonged in the desert until you find a place where your fear becomes faith. Then you are ready to get into the promised land. Not looking right, not looking left. But put your trust on, on God. And then you will see the victory. But too many people went back to the desert. Where the enemy reigns over them. They move around the same mountain. The same problem. The same thing that exalts. The same battle. But they hardly ever come to a place to, for victory. Because their heart that trembles. Their fear made them to be disqualified. To go to battle. And maybe this is the reason why you're struggling. Then it's time for you to put your trust in God. Let your word in God be a true word. And say, God, I can jump over a fence with you. I can, I can storm even so many people. But I know victory you will give unto me if I put my faith in you. I would like to pray for you this morning and for this week. And also for this month. Father, I thank you this morning for the word. May you touch the hearts and the minds of people. I know every day we are facing challenges. Sometimes these challenges are truly a battle. This morning, the word of God in the Old Testament said, when you go out to war against your enemies and you see the horses and chariots and army much larger, the situation larger than we can handle. You shall not be afraid of them. Forgive us this morning that we allow fear and being trembled and find heartedness 
And that disqualified us to go to war. To fight the enemy. For the Lord your God is with you. And Lord, we choose this morning to say, God, we put our trust in you. And as the priest, priest spoke to the people, I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to the heart of people this morning. Today, as you draw near to the battle, whatever you are facing the enemy, let not your heart fail. Do not fear or panic or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God is he who gives you to fight for your for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Lord, we will fight. We will rise up this morning and we will stand firm. And on your word, we will go into this battle carrying our own provision, carrying not even a weapon, only a trumpet speaking, declaring the word of God, knowing the victory belongs to us on the promises that we have from you, Lord Jesus. I pray that you will bless everyone, strengthen them, Lord. And the ones wandering in the desert because of their fear, and faint-heartedness, I pray that their faith will be built up, that they will come out of that desert into the promises you have promised them. Let them rise up, Lord, becoming a weapon of mass destruction in the spirit and taking you on your word. That I put my trust in you, God. You, through you, I will have the victory. I pray that. I pray that over them, God. Bless them, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, ignite them. But bring, bring the victory so that you can be glorified. I honor you right now. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed this morning the teaching. I believe that this morning... I mean, God is truly speaking to us. There's a war out there. And you know, every battle, if you read Deuteronomy chapter 20, every battle, if you put your trust in God, every battle is guaranteed that you will have victory. So why live a defeated life? If God is saying, if you put my trust in you, and do not fear, you will have the victory every time. Whatever the war, whatever the battle. But if you fear, you are disqualified. And you will see the enemy reign over you through his fear. And God wants you to bring you out of that wilderness. Make a choice today. Make a choice today. You see, it's easy to, when you face the battle, what's coming out? All the fear, all the lies, all the deceit of the devil that you believe. Or can you raise up and say, or being rise up and say, God, I stand on your word. Today, I'm getting out of the desert. I will fight my battles with my trust and faith in God. Because I know the outcome. Victory belongs to me through Christ Jesus. May God bless you. May you have an amazing weekend. Share this with someone. I believe someone needs to hear. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you for watching.